Good morning from the Water Utilization Learning Center. My name is Brian Olson. I'm out here with Mark Ryman, and we're looking at uh, our corn that we put in the ground on April uh, 24th. This is some of the corn that we've had in the ground the longest, and so the furthest along in maturity. And uh, we're out here today to talk about uh, those insects that are, are gonna be feeding on our corn ears. And so you can tell here, uh, we're in brown silk on, uh, on this corn. And so what are some of the things that we have that are feeding on that? And then also, what are some things that we can do to prevent that in the future? So Mark, what, uh, what are you seeing out there? Well, I'm seeing a few things. We kind of were really expecting to see um, a lot of Western bean cutworm given the flights we've been having, uh, especially in this area. If you look at like the trap data from North Platte, it is starting to slow down some, but they're still catching um, a good amount of Western bean cutworm moth at night. So it is good still to be scouting, especially if you've got some later planted corn that's just coming into tassel, that's still a good time to treat that. Um, the other thing that we've seen is uh, even some corn earworm feeding. I think some of our earlier hybrids in this study, um, like the 100 day maturities were pretty attractive to them. And so if you go in there and you peel back ears, um, you know, I was expecting to find Western bean cutworm, but you'll actually find some pretty good sized uh, corn earworm. And we always talk about corn earworm being cannibalistic, but if they're on separate sides of the ear, sometimes you'll see two, uh, three in there. Usually it's one, but they are doing some damage. So kind of the, the control options, there really isn't a great one in terms of an insecticide for earworm. For Western bean cutworm, it is a great option to use. Uh, there are a lot of products you can use as an insecticide. But the one I wanna highlight is um, a product we're standing in front of called Tricepta. Um, it does a great job uh, taking care of the ears from Western bean cutworm, and then also corn earworm and other ear pests. And so if you go through there, of course, and you peel back the ears, um, you know, you're really not gonna find any of that tip feeding on there. Uh, any damage to those kernels. So highly effective. If you've got fields that, you know, where you've got maybe Tricepta mixed in with um, a different product without that level of ear protection, I really recommend you go out, you know, take a look at those fields if they're in a test plot, uh, see what you can see as far as ear damage because it can be night and day under heavy pressure. So Tricept has been out on the market for a couple years now. And so what is the big difference between Tricept and maybe our VT Double Pro? Uh, so it contains the VIP3A protein. So it's got another mode of action and a really uh, effective one against Western bean cutworm. VT Double Pro has some activity on corn earworm, but the VIP3A protein in Tricepta really brings that Western bean cutworm control and better corn earworm control for us. At least, you know, that's what we see in the field. Uh, looking at ears. Yeah, and so uh, we have some very clean ears here in the tree septa corn and obviously uh, excited about what uh, the potential is for our harvest. Uh, when we look at something outside of the corn earworms, this is also a good time to be uh, scouting now for uh, beetles, right? Yeah, so it's a great time to be looking for, for us in particular, western corn rootworm beetles. Uh, if you know what you're planning to do on, you know, corn acres next year, or you're seeing some beetles out there in the field, it's a good time to go scout, especially if you plan on planting corn the next year. It'll give you a good indication of what to do uh, out there in the field. And there's a variety of ways of scouting. Um, you can look at the whole plant and count the beetles. You have to obviously move around to a lot of areas in the field and be very careful when scouting so you don't disturb them. Uh, they do tend to go up and fly away. Um, you can look at like the midsection of the plant only and do counting that way. And then the other option, one that we use here at the Learning Center are what we call the sticky traps or those yellow rootworm sticky traps. And we place those kind of at transects out in the field. And we look at how many beetles per day we catch. We basically go back to that area of the field every week, replace the sticky traps, and then count the number of beetles uh, that are on there. If you're getting an average of two a day, um, it's definitely gonna be something uh, even if you're in maybe a rotated situation, corn behind soybeans, you know, that next year of corn, you're really going to be want to look at, you know, below gallon control options or, um, 
you know, kind of a variety of plans to help you manage those insects because they've reached that economic level. So now is a great time to get out there and see what uh, you have out there in your corn, what's feeding on those ears. Do you need to move to something like a tree septa and then also back to the corn rootworm beetle? Uh, what is the activity and how many beetles are out there? Uh, we have had some uh, variability and some control. Uh, so it's important that uh, folks are out there really scouting to see what is going on uh, in those fields and do they need to come in there and uh, beetle bomb them uh, to knock down that pressure. So with that, we'll talk to you in the future about other agronomic topics from the Learning Center. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video from the Gothenburg Water Utilization Learning Center. For more information, please call 308-537-4500.